moving forward, I know you guys got the timeline uh, for BTCS with the application and the staking application. And I know there's not a whole lot you can speak on as far as future plans uh, outside of that timeline, but are you guys looking more into the Cosmos ecosystem or are you just sticking kind of with Cosmos Atom for now? Because Luna was one blockchain in Cosmos, but... Yeah, I think right now we're sticking with kind of the ones we have. We're obviously always looking to, you know, I expand, right? Um, and it, it kind of comes to those, you know, three prongs, right? What's the viability of the blockchain, right? Like, is it something that we believe has a future that we want to get behind? What's the profitability for us to get into it, right? And, that, and that's twofold. One is it, is it proof of stake like Ethereum, which is, I'd say, limit, you know, more limited upside, right? Mm -hmm. From uh, at least staking, because you can't scale it. Like it's not delegated proof of stake where we can say, hey, we're, we're going to do all the hard work. We'll run the validator node. Other people can kind of, you know, delegate their right to stake with us. And then we, you know, it becomes like a leveraged business model, kind of like Airbnb, right? Like you have a, you have a house, you want to make some money, but you don't want to give up your house. You list it on Airbnb, someone came, stays there, you know, you get their, uh, you know, whatever the rent is or the, 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 the fee for staying there net of Airbnb's, you know, fee, right? Yeah. Um, we're, we're definitely focused on, you know, quality blockchains um, and then profitability, which tends to lean more towards delegated proof of stake at the moment yeah. because it fits with the platform. Uh, and then the third is, you know, what's the, you know, what's the, how much work is it going to be to, to spin this thing up, right? From a technical perspective. Um, sometimes we'll look at a, um, you know, a, a blockchain and say, hey, we, you know, we, we, we like what it's doing, but, you know, geez, this is going to be a lot of work. Um, and it looks like the reward's not going to be that high or the risk reward for doing it's not going to be that high. So, um, you know, we historically tended to stick to, you know, the top, I think everything's been a top 50 blockchain. I mean, now, you know, maybe definitely top 100, but mm -hmm. usually top 50 has been kind of the, the philosophy, right? Though I think as we grow, we may look at some, some you know, uh, smaller ones, right? Like we are in Axie Infinity, Right. Which oh yeah, is, that was one I wanted to mention. Uh, that was actually a very unique one I did not see coming out of you guys. Can you expand on that one because that is in the uh, NFT gaming realm there? It, it, exactly, and I think we really like the use case. Right. It, it's it's kind of like when we talked about NFTs, um, you know, earlier about how you have that confluence of. The, the the things everything lining up right you have a, a use case and a product that a user can easily use i think you see that with like with gaming right where mm -hmm. someone can really understand like okay you've got a token that you can use in you know a game that can then trade on an exchange and um, you can build an ecosystem around that and i think that that makes a lot of sense right mm -hmm. obviously you know axie infinity you know for it to be highly successful it needs to grow um, you know, the user base, you know, the, everything needs to grow, right? It's all about that yeah. user acqu acquisition. So that one was, um, you know, a little different than some of the other uh, blockchains we've got involved in, but it, it had a <laughs> clear, clear use case that is, um, you, you know, happening today. It's not like, you know, beyond the horizon, right? Like, right. Um, and so that was, you know, that was kind of why we got involved. It's probably a smaller blockchain compared to some of the other ones that we're, we're involved in. Um, but we were excited about it. It's not a huge uh, position. I think obviously Ethereum's our, our largest uh, right. you know, position compared to others. And then uh, making sure that we balance those, you know, the other ones we're involved in out as well is, is kind of key to the, to the business. Maybe a couple months ago, there was something that happened with, the Axie blockchain, right? Some type of um, attack or something? Yep. Um, I don't recall the details off the top of my head. It was a little while ago. But yeah, that, there was a... Um, they basically had to pause it for a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were, you know, validating, you were, you were stuck. But it, it was, you know, returned to normal. Again, these things happen, right? This is, you know, blockchain technology is in yeah. the... Especially next generation blockchain technology. When you, when you get away from Bitcoin, we're like, hey... You move a token from one person to another and that's kind of all you're doing and you start saying hey we're going to build you know a platform on top of another blockchain or we're going to do right. something much more complex the you know this hasn't been around that long right we're, we're in the like the you know ballpark five-year range right with many of them coming out in the last couple of years and you know they're still very experimental in nature right oh, yeah. so you know it, it isn't without its its risks 
Um, I mean, look, yeah. Luna's a great example of that, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, of course, and every, anything has risk, you know, any type of assets, uh, you know, blockchain, node validating, anything, stocks, it, it, there's a risk in anything, especially in a new frontier like this. I mean, it's the wild, wild west, basically, you know, of the, of the internet, and it's in a form where, where it's going to disrupt a lot of sectors, and that's not going to go over easy. We're going to have... Uh, prior big companies, corporates and stuff who are not going to like some of that disruption and they're going to fight back. So that actually one, that, that one's really, really interesting. There's competition for it, for sure. But do you like that one because it has its own blockchain? Or would you be interested in something like um, Immutable X, uh, which has several games on it, Gods Unchained, uh, Guild of Guardians, but Immutable X is a layer two built on Ethereum, so it's got that Ethereum security. So I mean, look, we're looking at a lot of different things, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it kind of comes down to the, those three things, right? Like, like, do we like it? What's the, you know, what's the return, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the rewards and acts are very high, so that's obviously attractive. Um, you know, so it, it, it's basically a mix of those three things, right? Like how high? From a technical standpoint, how much how much work do we have to put in for the reward we're going to get, right? Yeah. Um, and so that that's kind of what we look at. Um, there's obviously so many projects yeah. to look at as we look to expand that it's like it's like mind blowing. Like, okay, how oh, do yeah. we yeah you know, how do we focus down? And a lot of it is, um, you know, we're, we're trying to pick the the best projects, but also you know sticking with the big ones right like at the, at the end of the day you know with a, like aluna we didn't have that much in it right it was more there was demand for it so it made sense to add it from a technical perspective and put what we needed in to get it going um but you know to the extent we can limit our risk right by diversifying across um projects and, and there's also you know over time we'll expand right i mean it, it takes it's not easy for us to add a new blockchain right i mean it's right like if you're doing it at home it's and you're technically savvy, it's pretty easy, right? You don't have to explain to your auditor how they're going to validate the fact you own tokens on a blockchain and do, you know, you're not building a whole PowerPoint presentation following the money back to explain it to someone so that they can go, you know, verify it and, you know, to the PCOB standards, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, you know, it, it's a process to add a new one. I mean, I think we're at, uh, I think we own 14 tokens now and, you know, um, you know, ballpark, I think like 10, 10 are, are staked, right? I don't have the list in front of me. Each one requires a, a significant amount of work, right? Due diligence on our part, uh, on, on, the, on the front end. And then once we've made the decision, you know, everything from the, 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 the technical aspects of spinning up a validator node, what we need to do to make sure that's running all the time, getting the wallet, figuring out the security of how we're going to store the token to how do we, how do we document it so that we're auditable, right? You know, so it's it's hard. And we're a small team, right? We're not Coinbase where we've got, I don't know how many employees they have now, but, um, you know, we given the size of our team, I think we, we've added a lot in a short period of time. Um, and we'll continue to add as we go forward, but it's, you know, the pace at which we add, unless we, you know, increase the team, uh, will probably, you know, I don't see that growing right because then we also have to add it to the platform right we're building a whole right. platform to pull that data right so each blockchain that we're running a validator node on we basically have all the data to have like a blockchain explorer right because that's what we need to be able to pull the data for our for our internal platform right we're not looking to like a third party blockchain explorer or you know third party apps we're building that all internally so yeah. for us to say hey we're just going to stake something and then we're not going to add the platform kind of takes away from the whole right. the scalability of the business model. So, you know, with respect to the ones you asked about, like we've got a, you know, look at next list, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of on, on the roadmap. And, um, you know, as, as we get closer to thinking about what we add next, we kind of go through those and say, okay, what's up, you know, what's up next? And um, and sometimes we'll, we'll get down the path and say, okay, look, wow, this turns out it's gonna be a lot more work than we thought. Let's, let's mm -hmm. you know, reorder that list a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, Tron, I'm comfortable with saying I hate Tron and it's trash. I'll say that publicly all day. Cause, that, <laughs> Cause just trying to move tokens around on Tron was a nightmare when I tried it the first time. But um, yeah, how did you have any, anything on uh, any of that? He just said any questions about BTCS? 
No, everything made sense. You know, I, I don't see any um, kinks in the chain. Kinks in the chain, I guess you could put it like that. But, I mean, it, it looks like a, a solid plan. What do you think about Elon and Twitter and all that? <laughs> yeah. You gotta take a sip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I haven't been following it as closely. I mean, the last I checked, he was uh, he thought there were a lot of fake accounts and it was kind of the the, the, the bid was on hold till that got verified. I have, I'll be honest, I've been busy to, to see where it went from, yeah. from, from I, there. I don't either. I, I haven't I don't know it much. I, I think Twitter is um, it's just becoming too much of a, of a meme joke stock. I mean, you got. Conor McGregor coming out talking about, oh, I'm gonna buy Twitter next. Then you got Snoop Dogg. It's like, look, man, I don't even want to trade it no more. I'm good. <laughs> well, that's what I've been saying since he started talking about Twitter. Is like, if you are trading Twitter, you are trading against the world's richest man. I don't want to be in the way. No, th- that's not it. You're trading against some of the world's stupidest people. Well, <laughs> well hey. that that too, but you I mean, I don't want to be in the way of somebody who's got that much money and talking about buying the whole entire company, you know. I don't want to be nowhere near any type of nonsense like that, especially yeah. with Elon as what's a good word for him? Sporadic. Polarizing, sporadic, oh, yeah. sporadic's a good word too. <laughs> Polarizing figure who is and hopefully Elon doesn't knock on your door, Charles. <laughs> I mean, look, if he wants to, to, yeah, I mean, I don't think that would necessarily be a bad thing, right? Depends what he wants to say, right? Uh, You know, uh, we we got a duty to our shareholders. If he wants to come write a big check, uh, I'm all ears. Okay. (laughs) Well, there you go, Elon. If you you heard that, Charles is all ears if you you got the the check ready. (laughs) Yeah, I think he probably has it. I don't know if he's writing it, but uh, yeah. (laughs) 